Hey, and welcome to the Vicar's Devotional. I am Mother Sandy, and if you can tell, I am not wearing clerics today. There's a very good reason for that on this Tuesday, October 1st. One, I filmed this on Friday after the hurricane and came in to assess the property, walk around, branches down. There was a piece of the fence that was down, so I got to have some fun and put the fence back together and move all of the branches. So it's been a busy morning. Um, so I figured since next week I am taking Monday and Tuesday off because today, Tuesday, not today, this past Friday, but Tuesday, October 1st is my birthday. So I will not be in the office. In fact, I took Monday and Tuesday off just to have some time. Um, so I wanted to get this done and I figured since I'm in the church doing some work outside, I would come in and do some work on the inside. So happy Tuesday. Welcome to the Vicar's Devotional. Again, I am Mother Sandy, and I'm so happy to have you join me on this Tuesday, on this time of reflection, on this time of just listening to scripture and seeing where the Lord takes us with it. So let us dig in. Um, Our scripture for today is taken from the Gospel of Luke. It's chapter 5, 12 through 26. Once, when he was in one of the cities, there was a man covered with leprosy. When he saw Jesus, he bowed with his face to the ground and begged him, Lord, if you choose, you can make me clean. Then Jesus stretched out his hands, touched him and said, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he ordered him to tell no one. Go, he said, and show yourself to the priest, and as Moses commanded, make an offering for your cleansing for a testimony for to them for a testimony to them. But now more than ever the word about Jesus spread abroad. Many crowds would gather to hear him and to be cured of their diseases. But he would not withdraw to deserted places and pray or but he would withdraw to deserted places and pray. One day while he was teaching, Pharisees and teachers of the law were sitting nearby. They had come from every village of Galilee and Judea and from Jerusalem. And the power of the Lord was with him to heal. Just then some men came, carrying a paralyzed man on a bed. They were trying to bring him in and lay him before Jesus. But finding no way to bring him in because of the crowd, they went up on the roof and let him down with his bed through the tiles and to the middle of the crowd in front of Jesus. When he saw their faith, he said, Friend, your sins are forgiven you. Then the scribes and the Pharisees began to question, Who is this who is speaking blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? When Jesus perceived their questions, he answered them, Why do you raise such questions in your hearts? Which is easier to say. Your sins are forgiven you, or to say, stand up and walk. But so that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the one who was paralyzed, I say to you, stand up and take your bed and go to your home. Immediately he stood up before them, took what he had been lying on, and went to his home, glorifying God. Amazement seized all of them. And they glorified God and were filled with awe, saying, We have seen strange things today. This is the gospel of the Lord. We have indeed seen strange things today. So, as I said, I'm recording this on Friday, September 27th, and we just got through a day of rain, of wind, and a night of storm surges. And for a lot of folks waking up, they're waking up to houses with water in them. They are waking up to islands that are underwater, possibly their cars flooded, just destruction. I think the news is saying that this is the most storm surge we've ever had in at least a hundred years, something, something like that. And um, I keep thinking this is, this is when we all band together. This is when it it is the faith of our friends that pulls us through because it's so easy when the waters are rising around us to feel like really we're being, we're being drowned or we're, they're, they're coming in on us. 
And so like the man in our gospel today where his friends were carrying him on a bed and then lowered him through a roof, it is really important for us, really important for us to be very discerning with the choosing of our friends. I want friends that lower me through a roof when I am paralyzed. I want friends who will come and get me when my emotions are taking me down. My my psychology, my brain, my um, spirit is is weary. Friends that walk with you, that carry your burden with them, and friends for whom you carry their burden as well. And sometimes, just sometimes, what we're feeling is also something other people can see. And we get ostracized or we get set apart like the paralyzed man in our gospel. And it feels like there is a whole world between us, a world that may indeed be dying or, or rotting, as the case may be with, with leprosy. And we may ask the questions, God, Jesus, if you so choose. And Jesus answered the man, I do choose. I do choose. You know, our our healings may not always come in the ways that we ask. So we may say, if you choose, and the answer is, I do choose. But that choice, remember, it's, it's all in God's will, but it's also in God's time. And so the things that come for us may not always come in the ways that we expect, the ways that we want. And so it's always important to, A, never stop asking God for help. God, do you choose, if you so choose. It's also very important for our lives to keep friends around us, that when we fall are willing to pick us up and put us through a roof so that we can be healed. We all, we all are after wholeness. We all are after transformation. That's the, that's the entire point of this relationship, this journey with Christ is healing, transformation. So the more we're healed, the more we can be used for Jesus to heal others. I mean, that's, that's what keeps us accountable. Um, I think it was, was it Henry Nowen that wrote the book Wounded, The Wounded Healer? I think it was. We all have our places where maybe the world judges us, or maybe we're just unable to move, we're frozen. It's those places that Jesus wants to heal. And so as I sit here on the other side after the hurricane, and I think about friends who have water in their homes, or water everywhere around them right now, um, where their homes might be the only place high enough, um, I think about those folks. And the folks that are getting the storm right now, it's, I mean, it's a tropical storm now, but that was a big storm. And so we have that question, Jesus, if you so choose, you could heal this. And that's the emotions. God is with us in the storm. We have our gospel. Um, I believe I, that was my reflection in our newsletter. Uh, we have the gospel where Jesus come the storm. But remember, Jesus wasn't apart from the storm. He was in the storm with the disciples. He so chose to heal them that he calmed the storm. But he also calmed the storm raging within them. Surround yourself with folks who listen to Jesus, who are Jesus to you, who allow that who allow that miraculous healing that Jesus does to flow through them. Remember, we are vessels. We are his hands and feet on earth right now. Be that to someone else so that they can be it to someone else. It is a wonderful pattern that we have. Have a wonderful week. You are incredibly loved. I will talk to you all on Sunday and get everything ready. (laughs) It's been a night. Have a beautiful week. Be safe. Call the church if you need anything. Email me if you need anything. Be blessed, and I will talk with you soon.